most of you don't understand the word Baha'i. Most especially our friends in Kampala, Uganda. You just see the building on top of the hill. You're welcome and join me to the journey of exploring the well-known Baha'i Temple. We're going to know about the stories about Baha'i, where it came from, what does it teach about? The issues concerning different religions coming to get together, what does it mean? Join me as you get to know more about the Baha'i religion and the Baha'i temple. We are powered by Beaver Organic and Natural Healthcare Products. Join me. My name is Waso Emmanuel. You are welcome to yet another edition of the show. We are looking at one of the tourist attractions we have in Uganda, a religious tourist attraction. Very people have different stories about the Baha'i Temple. Me too. I want to know, I want to understand stories about Baha'i Temple, the secrets about Baha'i Temple. So join me as we unveil, get know more about this place, the holy place. I hear that different people come here for prayers. What are the terms and conditions? Wow, we are powered by Beaver Organic and Natural Healthcare Products. You can look up Dr. Sanjay Richard. At the same time, we are powered by Taskalite Benzori Marathon. Let's have the story and you get to know the reality, the truth, and the myth about the Baha'i Temple. What does it mean? Thank you. As I told you, let's get to know much about this amazing place. I'm glad to have the director. You're welcome, sir. Nice to meet you, Aswa. How are you doing? I'm um, well, thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. For my case, I know you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> but for others, they may not know you. Yes. You're on Waswa Emma YouTube channel. Yes. And I'm excited to come and visit Baha'i. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the Baha'i Temple. Okay. My name is Charles Anglin Semwezi. Anglin Semwezi. Yes, Anglin, same way. Anglin, same way. Yes, and I am the caretaker here at the Baha'i House of Worship. The caretaker, yes. Baha'i House of Worship. Yes. Oh, I'm glad to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. I thought I was going to meet someone who's putting on the church. The church wear. Down, church <laughs> wear, something like that. But you're putting on maybe the gentleman's wear. Yes, please. Why? Why? Yes. Uh, there's no specific religious dress that we have. Uh, because Baha'is are found from all over the world. Okay. And so people from different cultures wear different clothing. Yeah. So here, I'm just allowed to come with anything, I feel like. Well, whatever you're wearing should be modest and respectful of the place because it is a, it is a house of worship. As long as it's respectful yes. and modest, as you've said. Yes. Okay. We are the Baha'i Temple. Yes. Everyone in this, I'm, I'm sure, what I'm going to say is not new to you. Yes. Different people have a different belief about Baha'i. Yes. There's no way in, in, in Kampala here, you stand and you don't see this building. Yes, At yes. least in most of the areas, you can be able to because it's on a high altitude. First and foremost, people want to understand what is the word Baha'i, the meaning of the word Baha'i. Ah, that is a good question. So yes. the word Baha'i comes from the word Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah. And Baha'u'llah is the title of a personage who, who was a founder of the Baha'i faith. So a Baha'i is a follower of Baha'u'llah. Ooh. Just like a Christian is a follower of Christ. Of Christ. Yes. So Baha'i is a follower. It's follower a follower of, of Baha'u'llah. Baha yes. Uh, should I ask another question about, is it like a kingdom? Do we have, a, if someone goes off or rests, we have a follower? Oh, 
So we have what we call an administrative order through which the, the, the faith is organized and governed. But uh, in history, of course, it was founded by uh, a personage. Mm. So the Baha'i faith be, uh, began in Iran in 1844. Iran? Yes. Yes. I and, read about it. And uh, uh, the, the personage called the Bab, which means the gate, announced to the people of Iran that they were witnessing the dawn of a new day and a time uh, in which uh, uh, great changes would be seen in, in society. Mm. Uh, and that uh, a, a divine teacher was about to appear who would bring about the unification and the betterment of the world. Wow. And uh, because of his teachings and because of, uh, of, of the way his message was received, yeah, eventually the Bab was put to death in 1850. Yeah. So his ministry lasted from 1844 to 1850. Mm. And uh, his followers in Iran, they were persecuted. Over 20,000 were put to death. Yeah. And a few of the remaining followers uh, some were sent into exile. Okay. Uh, one of those who were sent into exile, one of, of the prominent followers of the Bab was known as Baha'u'llah. And in 1863, he publicly announced that he was the one who the Bab had foretold. Okay. And the followers of Baha'u'llah were thereafter known as Baha'is. Oh. Yes. Okay, now, uh, so we are coming fast, fast forward. Yes. How does Baha'i enters Africa and then Uganda in particular. Okay, so Bahala was exiled uh, from his home, like I mentioned, to Iraq and then uh, to the to what is known as Turkey today and eventually to, mm. to Palestine, uh, okay. which is Israel today. And then uh, henceforth the faith spread to different countries in the world. So mm. at the time of Bahala's passing, I think the faith was in about 15 countries, including India, and then, uh, and, and I think in Egypt, and then uh, at the time of his successor, who was Abdul Baha, it was in over 30 countries. And then in the time of Shoghi Effendi, it spread to over 200 countries in the world. And in 1951, uh, some believers from Iran and one gentleman from Britain uh, moved to Kampala in August of 1951. Mm. So Musa Banani and his wife Samia Banani as well as his uh, his daughter Bahia, uh, his daughter uh, Violet, sorry, Nakjavani, and his granddaughter Bahia Nakjavani, and his son-in-law Ali Nakjavani, they moved to Kampala, and they were accompanied by a gentleman from Britain known as Philip Hainsworth. And they bought a house here in Kampala, and they began to teach the faith to to the people of Uganda. To the people of Uganda. Yes. Those are how many years now? <laughs> fifty-one. So 51. twenty-three minus fifty-one. Is about uh, 74 years? Seven, okay. 74. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's, yes. that's great. Really yes. nice and wonderful. Yes. So uh, in Uganda here, uh, I don't know whether what I read about was right, but yes. is this the biggest center? So the biggest the, temple? This is where, where the house of worship was first built and we have the national Baha'i offices mm -hmm. and we have other centers around the country, but this is, this is the, the national office. The national office. But also the Baha'i House of Worship in Africa is the first Baha'i House of Worship mm. to be built. To be built. Although recently, uh, in uh, March of 2023, one was opened in DRC, Kinshasa. Yes. Then in 2020, uh, 2021, another one was built in Matunda Soy, that's Eldoret, Kenya. Kenya. And then another one is going to be built in Wililingwa, Zambia. Zambia. So the process of building these houses of worship is gradual, depending gradual. on how, how the community grows. Okay. What yes. makes Baha'i so special? Because what I hear is that everyone, or a pagan, Christian, Muslim, we are allowed to come here to exercise our faith. So uh, we all know whatever religion that we believe in, that we were all created by God. God created man okay. and he has created us in his image. So mm. these powers of the spirit, that is knowledge, understanding, love, and justice. These are the characteristics of God. But God has placed the, that image within us, mm. in, in our inner reality, our spiritual reality. Mm. So man has both a body and a spirit. And, uh, and this inner reality is what makes us human beings. Yeah. So above all created things, man has this rational soul, all these powers that enables man to to rise above all created things and yes. this is the divine nature in man and uh, and this divine nature is able to recognize god yes. and of course 
all created things need an educator, including man and his soul. Yes. So every few thousand years, God sends a divine teacher who brings teachings that help a man to grow and advance. Yes. So man uses two kinds of knowledge to advance society. One is religion, which comes from God, through the messengers of God. Okay. So like Christ, Muhammad, Baha'u'llah, Abraham, Moses. And then man also uses science. So both science and religion help man to advance okay. and, and, and enable him to, to uplift the human condition. So all these religions that have come in the past, okay. including the Baha'i faith, were basically a revelation of God. Mm. That would assist man uh, in the betterment of the world. Okay. And Baha'u'llah said he is not the last messenger of God, but more messengers of God will come in the future. So this process of the evolution of man is, is propelled by these divine teachings which come from God from time to time. Do you have a certain criteria we follow? Like, uh, do you have, it? for example, in Christianity, yes. we believe that we, we pray on Sundays. So here, what takes place? So that is a very broad question. So, you, you, for example, the body must eat uh, at a certain interval. It is a law of nature. That is how God created it. Yes. But the soul also needs food, and the food of the spirit is the, the revelation, the word of God, and prayer. Yeah. So you don't say, I'm only going to eat on some days and not on others. Mm. So, uh, you also don't say, I'm going to pray on some days and I don't pray on others. Mm. So all, all, all religions say we should pray every day. Every day. It's just that maybe people go to church on Sunday, mm. but on Monday people still pray. Okay. Same with Muslims, yeah? Mm. They pray Monday to Friday, Sunday, but on Friday they go. It's a congregation. Yes, exactly. So, so they, here, mm. we also have our prayers every day, and we have different devotional meetings during okay. the, the week, but the, the main day when everyone is here, because okay. they are available, is a Sunday. Mm, yeah. no. But it's not like it's a special day mm. for prayer. For prayer. Every day is a day for prayer. Now, uh, are you the one who leads the prayers? So in the Baha'i faith, we, uh, we do not have uh, priests or a priesthood. Really? Yes. So Baha'u'llah uh, teaches us that we have entered the age of maturity mm. and every, every soul has the capacity to know and worship God. Yes. And no man can, in, uh, can intercede between you and God, except mm. the messenger of God. Yes, yes. So when you read the revelation and you don't understand something, yes, you can ask me, Charles, what do you think? Whatever I share is my opinion, but okay. it doesn't mean I am closer to God than you are closer to God. So on that yeah. day of prayers, yes. like on Sunday, or, or on, on that time, uh, during the time of prayers, yes. whom do we select to lead us? So that day we prepare a devotional program and we select prayers, different holy writings, and then we choose readers, and they will go and stand in front of the, of the, of the, the group of friends who are praying, and they will read their prayers. Even me, I can. Eh? Even you, you can. But we don't. We don't now start preaching and interpreting and discussing the mm. word of God. That is done outside the, the house of worship. It's not done inside the house of worship. Okay. Yes. So I'm seeing this uh, this temple here. Yes. Why is it that it's having nine? Yes. So the, the house of worship yes. uh, is designed in a way that it should harmonize with the environment and with the culture. Mm. But the nine doors is is uh, a representation of completeness. Because nine is the highest single digit, yes. And any other number after nine is a combination of of any number up to nine. Oh, so it's a symbol of completeness, yeah, yeah and and perfection. Okay. So the design of the house of worship generally should have nine doors, but usually it it, uh, it 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 harmonizes with the culture of that locality. So you can see the way the colors and the shape. Uh, it is very, it's in keeping with the landscape. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. This place is so big and it's having a very favorable compound. Yes. Besides the prayers, what else takes place around here? So many things happen in the gardens. Uh, apart from praying in the temple, you can also pray in the gardens and meditate because nature reminds us of the beauty of God. People are also welcome to come and hold picnics, to relax and spend time with family and friends. As long as they do not do anything that is contrary to the teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, other things people do is study and explore uh, questions about life and how to better their community. Yes. And in fact, the House of Worship uh, is an institution that integrates worship and service. Mm. Because worship is not enough. We yes. must, prayers are answered through action. Mm. And when we come to pray, we are then inspired 
to go out and serve our communities to bring about transformation in mm. society. Okay. So we hope that everyone who comes to visit to pray will not only pray, but they will be inspired mm. to serve their communities. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for the years Baha'i Temp has been here, and yes. for the years you've been serving the Lord, what special thing has Baha'i changed? Maybe the mindset or the community? Like that one. That one different thing. You, you believe that people in Baha'i here have changed like this. So the... the uh, tra transformation is a process that happens over time mm. and the human heart is influenced by environment and the environment influences the human heart and the teachings of Baha'u'llah that are slowly bringing about transformation in the world there are many and mm. one of them is the we have discussed is the oneness of humankind mm. so all of us have a soul and this soul is what makes us human yes whether you're a woman, no matter, or, or whether you're a man, or whatever nationality, tribe, class, background, you have a soul. Yes. And this soul has certain powers. So this common identity means that we are all one family. Mm. And then we think about others needs to change so that we view each other as one, one people. Yes. And when we learn how to do that, then the way we organize society will also change. Mm. Because a lot of disagreements come from these divisions and these distinctions. Yeah. yeah. We believe that family is the smallest unit yes. of the world. Uh, do we do ma marriages here, official marriages? Yes, we do. So in, in the Baha'i faith, marriage is between man and a woman. Okay. And you, you can only marry one wife. Yes. And uh, in order to get married, one is, of course, the person you want to marry has to agree. Yes. Then you need permission from your parents okay. who are alive, those mm -hmm. who are alive. And then you need two witnesses. Mm. And then the bride and the groom, they exchange a vow. They, each of them says, we will all verily abide by the will of God. Yes. So they make the marriage conditional on the will of God. So whatever God wills and happens, mm. that is what you will abide by in the marriage. So the marriage services are carried on. So they are, Yes, but it is not inside the temple. Yeah. So in the temple, the couple can pray. With, uh, with their friends for the marriage. Okay. But the ceremony is held outside the house of worship. The other time when I came here, I got a chance of just touring inside a little yeah. bit. Uh, they told me how to remove my shoes. Yes. Yeah. Can you tell me some of the terms and conditions or the spirituals like when I'm entering there? So because you may find other people praying in the temple, out of respect, we, we request that you pray silently. Okay. Uh, we, we ask that you don't use your cell phone in the house of worship. You keep it on silent as well. Mm. We ask that, of course, you are dressed appropriately and that whatever you're reading uh, is appropriate for the house of worship. For the house of worship. Yeah. And outside, of course, the kind of music uh, that people play, the volume, the kind of games they are playing and the things they are doing should be appropriate to the, the nature of the place. Okay. Yeah. So the other building I'm seeing there, uh, it looks also the same almost to this one. Yes. Is this another prayer center? Oh. So that is actually not a prayer center, but it's an administrative building. So the offices of the institutions mm. that support the processes of the faith in the country, okay. some of them you find them there. Oh, okay. Okay, let's talk about uh, tourism. Yes, please. You know, tourism and religion, most people don't understand, but it interjects. Yes, there is a connection. There is yeah. a connection there. The tourism side, a bit of it. Uh, how is Baha'i interconnecting with tourism? Because I see different things here. Yes. Someone who, who's there who, who would like to come and visit the place or get to know what is happening here. What is, like, tell us about your relationship with tourism. For example, in Namgongo, people go there for pill? For pilgrimage, yes. What can carry someone from, let me say, from Israel or from South Africa to come and visit Baha'i? Like this. So... I think that, the, if I may say that, of course, the spiritual and material go hand in hand. Yes. And people visit the, the Baha'is of worship to enjoy the beauty of the building, the gardens, but also to have that spiritual experience. Yes. And uh, we do not charge entry here. It's free. It's free. And the reason we do not charge is that knowledge is from God and it's for all human beings to use. Okay. Yeah. So we cannot, we, we cannot charge anyone to enter and use this place and all are welcome. Mm. So even the tourists are welcome to come and see the okay. house of worship and to, to learn what it is about. Okay. Do you have a museum here? We, 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 we don't have a museum. 
is not yet available or because i was like where we keep the historical after 10 years you may be having our chairs so the the because in, after a generation yes we have to keep samples for those who didn't know what happened so there is um, uh, at the offices at the world at uh, the world center the head office of the faith there are some relics from the past yeah, like the clothes which Bahá'u'lláh wore, oh, those ones. maybe the soap he used and different things. And if you go on pilgrimage there, you can see those things. Where is it located? It's in, uh, it's in Israel, in Haifa and, uh, and Akka, the Twin Cities. Okay. Yes. And here, of course, we do have some, some relics, but they are not disp on display mm. for the public to yes. see. Okay. Because they are precious items. So mm. it's not a museum mm. per se. But if you think about the purpose of the house of worship as a place for the society, for the community, mm -hmm. to come and to meet and to connect with their maker, but also to think about how to contribute to the betterment of their community, then in the future you will see that there are many other what we call dependencies that will be connected. Okay. So there will probably be a hospital, there will be an orphanage, a university, mm -hmm and all these other structures that support the humanitarian and social needs of society. Okay. Because it's not enough to pray. Like I said, we must also work for the betterment of society. As we are winding up our interview, uh, very many people there are ignorant about Baha'i. Yeah. I'm sure if you, ask, if you move outside these villages and you ask someone about Baha'i, you get few people who will give you the real answer yes. about this place. Some will be like, oh, Echifecho, that place. So, what have you done to spread the, the message of Baha'i to, to the community around? And then, what can you tell them, those who are having different myths and beliefs about Baha'i? So, what I can say to everyone is that all of us have a mind to know. Yes. And uh, we have what we call the sense of justice. Mm. And we should not just believe what anyone tells us, rather we should investigate and find out for ourselves. Okay. Yeah? That is why God gave each one of us a mind to, to, know. to know. This is the principle of the independent investigation of truth. Yes. When your relative, your friend or anyone tells you something, you must prove it for yourself. So mm. I encourage everyone to come and see for themselves what is the Baha'i house of worship and what is the Baha'i faith all about. And not to just accept what they hear. Okay. The second thing I can say is that we have an educational process which mm. we are we are propagating in different communities around the country and around the world. Okay. In which people engage in study and they apply these teachings of Baha'u'llah to mm. their family life, to their community life, in order to bring about transformation. And these activities are open to everyone. Okay. No matter what your religion is, your background is, you're welcome to come and explore with us how do we build a better world. Because the world will not be built by a few people. Yes, we have to come together. Universal participation is necessary to bring about transformation for everyone. For everyone. Oh my goodness. Uh, we, we really had a very great story. In a brief moment, I just got to know much more about this place and I've liked it. Can you give us your last remarks about Baha'i and then your last message to the world? Maybe <laughs> as a priest or as a, a religious leader, even the word of God. Well, uh, I am not a priest or a religious leader because I am not closer to God than anyone. Yeah. Because it is God who has the power to judge our souls. But I, I, would, I would like to thank you for coming and for doing this interview and for this service you are doing because really this is one of the ways in which you are serving humanity. Yes. And to encourage, encourage everyone who has a chance to come and visit and to explore and to use the house of worship and the gardens and to think about what it is that they can do to contribute mm -hmm. to the transformation of society. Okay. Yeah. Okay, lastly, do we have an annual celebration, like a party or a prayer, like that annual celebration for the place? So it's not necessarily an annual celebration, but mm. we do have Baha'i Holy Days as a special day. Mm. So the day when Baha'u'llah proclaimed his mission is a holy day that mm. we celebrate. The date is? Uh, the day, that is uh, what we call Rizwan. It is, there, there are 12 days, but we uh, we choose three days in which we do not work. Yeah, uh, they are not fixed. They are, so depending on the calendar uh, mm -hmm. and and the way the the movement of the planets is, the, some of the days are fixed and some are not. Are yeah. not. But it's in it's in the period of April twenty third okay. to May second. Okay, that's what we call Rizwan or Paradise. Mm. 
Then there's uh, the birthdays of the Baba and Bahá'u'lláh which are around October, November. Yes. Uh, then we have also the declaration of the Bab, which is when the Bab pro proclaimed his mission. Okay. We also have the, the day Baha'u'llah passed away or ascended to the next world. Okay. The day the Bab was uh, martyr. Okay. So all those are Baha'i holidays. Mm. And then there is Naruz, which is the, the New Year okay. day. Yes. Uh, if you ask me as Emma, what I've got from this place, my main issue has been uh, the, the difference, the, that different thing of everyone coming together, regardless of your belief, your faith, you are allowed to carry all your problems, bring, rest them from here, you will get what you're looking for. And I believe knowledge is power. Let's always look for knowledge. Yes. Knowledge. If you have knowledge and communication, everything can be sorted out. Yes. Stay blessed to everyone who has been watching us. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Thank you. Let me continue awesome. around and tour around. Get to know more. And maybe have a prayer. Because Thank I've you. taken like almost a year. Not sure. going to church. <laughs> I've been having so many challenges. Yes. But yes. I hope today I'm going to live. Thank you so much. Most welcome. Thank okay. you also. Yeah. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>